You're listening to KSJO, San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, and the entire Bay Area. A universal media access station. For more information, visit U923FM.com today. Friends, this is Srini Saripali welcoming you back to 92.3 FM Studios. I am live here between 12 and 2 every day, every weekday, and we talk about technology. We talk about angel investing. We talk about funding your idea. We, we, we talk about taking your passions and turning them into profits. We talk everything, anything about technology, and obviously, um, I appreciate all your emails. I appreciate all your uh, feedback, and uh, uh, thanks for tuning in every day between uh, 12 and 2. This is called the Tech FM Show. I call it Tech FM Hangout, where we hang out, we talk about the greatest things that are happening today. Uh, we talk about all the coolest applications, coolest apps. Uh, we take your uh, feedback, your uh, uh, you know, the things that you use to make your life more productive, to make your uh, uh, you know. Uh, work more effective we talk about all those things here so at some point in time as i go along in through the show we'll be taking your your, your suggestions uh, i'll be asking you what are the cool apps that you are using uh, and uh, we had been getting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, feedback from uh, from many of you and thanks for all those text messages that i received yesterday um, as I go along on the show today, we'll be having some guests and we'll be talking about uh, innovation, we'll be talking about agility, software development, we'll talk about deliverability and all that. I have a very, very special guest in the studios with me and um, he is, uh, I consider to me, uh, I consider him one, as one of the most amazing individuals when it comes down to software delivery. We'll be talking to him uh, in a minute. And um, between uh, thereafter, from 1 to 2 p.m., uh, we'll be having uh, some uh, more guests, and uh, that's going to be an awesome, uh, you know, uh, uh, conversation too. So my request to you is, as we go along here, I want you to participate in this conversation. I want you to. Uh, dial in into the studio. The number in the studio is 408-912-5265. 408-912-5265. Have that number handy. And as we go along here, I want you to participate in the conversation. Understand this. If it is one way monologue, then there is absolutely, uh, you know, there is obviously information there, but it's not really soul enriching. It's not soul enlightening. I want you to participate in this conversation. And when that happens, when you give me an idea, when I give you an idea, we all share ideas then we are our lives gets enriched in the process so without wasting any, any further time uh, if you're just tuning in my name is Srini Saripali and you're listening to me on the Tech FM radio every day between every weekday between 12 and 2 this is 92.3 FM the number in the studio is 408-912-5265 and my guest today is Hatinder Chawla he's a senior manager at Cisco IT with over 25 years experience in um, technology in innovation software delivery um, an incredible man that whom I've known him for many, many years personally. He has an uh, MBA from Haas School of Business. Uh, he has done his master's from Germany, and he also holds an engineering degree in electrical, electrical engineering from BITS India. So, Hatinder, it's an honor, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Hey, Srini. It's uh, good to be here. Thank you. Hatinder, uh, one of the things that we received in the last few days was, uh, you know, the whole evolution of agile, uh, development and where this industry is going and I've known you for, for some time now and your uh, uh, your leadership within that space has been amazing and I really wanted to you know invite you and thanks for taking time and coming though today thank you um, and and uh, I wanted you to pick your brain uh, you know where you know how do you see software delivery based on your experience and you working with you know uh, with uh, so many different uh, technologies so many different vendors and putting this all together and delivering applications on time on budget uh, to expectations where do you see this evolving as it stands right now yep so uh, great to be here now I, I think software development uh, has somewhere its roots in being looked at as a process from an operations perspective. So everything is well analyzed, you know the outcomes, you want to optimize it. And what that led to in the past is just this whole cycle of I need to know exactly what I'm doing, I need to be very sure about the outcomes, and I, I go through this whole process one by one and eventually I have a piece of software. Now, while some of those outcomes are good for the manufacturing industry, what that has done to software is is that it to some extent kills innovation, but also the fact that software in itself is, is so much of, uh, there is an unpredictability in what we really develop and what people need. Right. So agility, uh, from my perspective, is actually 
bridging the gap that we have in, in current processes that we use in a lot of uh, areas where we do software development. And, and I think that's sort of the big change that it's bringing. It's sort of the view of what what is the end product of a software that we build and how predictable is it in, in terms mm. of the outcomes and what people want. And you see a, a tremendous future uh, going forward. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you have uh, uh, applied the principles of agile, uh, agile development within um, within sales, you have done that within sales IT, you have done that within e-commerce, where you are, what you're saying is that uh, this is here to stay, this is here to be adopted, this is here, I think, are we out of the adoption cycle now, where we stand with, with agile development, or is it still being uh, something that companies are still exploring, as you see it? Yeah, I think it's, it's something that depends on your company and where the company is. I work in a large company, Cisco, and, and I would say that in larger companies, they're still exploring this technology, just because people are not very comfortable with the fact that I will step by step get to the outcomes that I need. Mm. Uh, but it is being explored in a large way, I would say. I do both of these today, and I, I, I've done both of these technology, uh, both of these methodologies in the past as right, well. Right. And, and it, it just depends on people's uh, the, the comfort level that people have. Right. Uh, larger companies have a lar lot of more stakeholders and, right. and a lot, lot of processes that are actually already in place. So I think everybody understands that if we were to operate as a startup, we would be so much more successful. But there's a big gap in saying we want to operate like that and can we actually operate like that. So uh, large companies, I would say the adoption still is, isn't that big, but it is getting there. Mm. Uh, it's not uh, definitely from my own experience, it has not crossed the curve where people think it's mm. the standard way of doing things. Uh, it's still it's still growing. Wow. Friends, if you're just tuning in, I'm in conversation with Hatinder Chawla, Senior Manager at Cisco IT, and we are talking about uh, agile development. We are talking about, uh, you know, methodologies uh, within the agile space. And uh, we're also talking about uh, picking his brain about uh, you know how he has uh, successfully implemented many uh, different technologies uh, and and also successfully completed uh, projects in fact uh, is it uh, fair to say hatinder uh, that you introduced the concept of uh, you know scrum methodology in cisco so i would say within uh, cisco it uh, we 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 didn't use scrum before right and this goes back 5 years ago mm. uh, and I'll just talk through sort of what brought it in. Right, right? that's that would uh, be very that's helpful. Sort yeah. of it's always an interesting case, and it's it's sometimes it's quality that brings it in. Sometimes people want to reduce cost. Sometimes it's timeline. In our case, it was certainly time to market. Hmm. Uh, we had a big initiative coming in, saying, "Hey, we need to change how we are forecasting," oh. and 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 we want to do that in the next two months and take it out to our people in three months. Right. Mm. You just could not have done that in, in a normal life cycle. In Standard normal waterfall methodology. It was sort of, there was a timeline and market uh, pressure to, to introduce something, and you just couldn't have done that with the way we do things because we take six to nine months easy to get any major capability into the market, in, into, you know, out into mm. our production mm. systems. Mm. So mm. we were forced by the timing. We had to think out of the box and that also forced a lot of acceptance on let's do that. So mm. that's when I got introduced to it and I pushed for it. Mm. Uh, we, and, and Srini, you were there with me at that time, right? Right, so absolutely. We had no idea about these technologies uh, at that time. No idea to the extent of the precise methodology to use. We have been doing agile here and there, right? But right. then there's this, you, you have a huge implementation. You're going to impact 15,000 people in a business environment. Right. So you want to have the right mix between uh, am I doing it fast enough and uh, am I doing it right and right. is the quality control there. So it, it doesn't, agile doesn't mean that you just, you know, knock out all your controls and just push out whatever, in, at least in a big environment like, like Cisco's. So we, uh, at that time, uh, forced that we got one of our one of the key people who introduced agile Ken Schrauber at that time right. who, who ca came and spoke to us personally yes. Yes. for a couple of days on this and, and right. that sort of triggered this whole wave and, and, and we got going with that right I mean uh, you know one thing for sure uh, it's a it's a ma major paradigm shift between uh, you know there is a set set way of approaching things and uh, 
uh, there is a proven map in the minds of people how they should approach it uh, in the traditional way of approaching software delivery and uh, shifting to a whole different new paradigm and now executing within that paradigm and you know s and then results obviously uh, you'll see a dip in productivity before really something starts you know you see a dip instant dip and then some degree of stability for some time and then it slowly starts going up um, you know We'll, we'll come back and talk about that. We have to take a break. Friends, you are listening to me, Srini Saripali, here on Tech FM Radio, and I'm in conversation with Hatinder Chawla, Senior Manager of IT at Cisco, and this is 92.3 FM. The studio number is 408-912-5265. We'll go to, we're going to go into a break, but when, uh, please, you know, if you have a question for Hatinder or myself, or you want to join this conversation about agile methodologies and how, uh, if you, you might be a professional uh, seeking to really enhance your career uh, using, uh, you know, Scrum or any other methodology or you are uh, a company trying to adopt uh uh, you know, Scrum or any any agile uh, methodologies out there. Uh, by all means, uh, we would love to hear from you. The number in the studio is four zero eight nine one two five two six five, and we'll be back after these messages. Friends, this is Rani Saripali welcoming you back to ninety two point three FM, and we are in conversation with Hatinder Chawla, senior manager at Cisco IT, and we're talking about agile development. We are talking about software deliverability, and we'll be talking about innovation and many other things as we go along here, but. Uh, uh, if you want to join the conversation, the number is 408-912-5265. And uh, we are here every day between uh, 12 and 2 uh, with the Tech FM radio show. And if you want to advertise your products and your services and you want your message to reach, uh, you know, the entire, uh, the uh, uh, you know, Silicon Valley for that matter, then by all means, uh, please do call in uh, to our office, which is 408 440 0851. And that's the number, 408 Four four zero zero eight five one. Before taking the break, before going into the break, we were talking about uh, you know Scrum methodology as such and a huge cultural shift that could potentially it could bring to a co company to an organization that is uh, you know has a set paradigm through which it it has been operating for a long time and suddenly when you introduce uh, a shift like this. Uh, there are there are productivity issues. There are there is resistance, and there is a cha there are challenges in, within within that uh, when that change happens. And I think that uh, you, uh, you know that was uh, that was easy transition. That was difficult transition when that happened. When you introduced this whole thing. Well, I think we had a top management buy-in, so so that made it easier. But once once we started implementing, right. we we actually exactly got into some of the issues you're talking about. What happens is people start associating their job as to the work they produce, mm. and and when when that work output changes, they they feel threatened, mm. or they start looking around for what is my job definition now. So we started having those issues because agile actually changes the way things get done, mm. and and it takes out if you are day in and day out responsible to write requirements, and suddenly someone comes and says well, you know what, you don't have to do all of that, or at least you don't have to do that to the extent that you're doing it. Uh, come and test the software. That's a more productive use of your time. Right. Uh, and at the same time, you have a testing team whose sole purpose there is to just test, and they see that there are other people and, you know, coming and doing work that they are doing. Right. So it, it starts causing a lot, a lot of role conflict. Mm. And when if someone thought, you know, I need to come in six hours a day, I'll code, and, and that's my job profile. And you, you tell that person, no, you gotta be sitting in a meeting thinking about what to build. Right. Not just go and code off of you know, s some piece that's very precisely written off for you. Right. So it, it causes conflicts, it causes a lot of change management issues. Right. Uh, and, and you will eventually get through that. Right. But just keep in mind that as humans, that eventually is not a very short period of time. Mm. Uh, we have years and years of uh, how we have worked, right. and that'll at least take a few months, if not years, for us to change. Mm. Mm. And and uh, you know, uh, one thing that I would uh, I would like to ask you. I don't know it's appropriate time right now, but. Uh, one of the shifts that I have personally seen where uh, you have a set way of doing things, let's say you have a waterfall methodology that you are following, and suddenly there comes a point where uh, you're being asked to now move, shift, and completely look at uh, the same set of outcomes using a different methodology. In this case, let's, let's talk about whole scrum methodology. for the, and, and, uh, and 
uh, one of the things we see 99% of the times, and I, if even I think 99% of the times, we, I, would, I would say probably 99.5% of the times, uh, you know, people take the same uh, approach into that new concept. And, uh, you know, you see this whole, uh, you know, two-week cycles or three-week cycles within which they're still doing waterfall, right? And, and, and they're still, uh, you know, there is, even though on a, uh, on the verbiage level or at a at a you know discussion level you're talking scrum and agility and all that but deep within at the time when you're uh, you know the rubber meets the road you're still doing the you know your mindset is waterfall your execution is waterfall uh, there are external dependencies you don't know how to deal with them and uh, you know one of the things that you have done is you've very effectively addressed those things very early on in in all in at, you know at the time when you introduced the whole scrum methodology there and also executing the first 10 or 15 different uh, you know uh, products to completion and that was one of your primary focuses where you just made sure that you know scrum is really used as scrum rather than a glorified uh, you know uh, modified kind of a waterfall methodology there so just could you address that a little bit yeah so uh, <clears throat> it's it's very natural for us to just take things at the very highest superficial level and try to say that's what we're doing and mm -hmm. honestly it's so true there are many groups that when there is a high pressure on people to operate and and be agile and and now it depends on you how much you want to be because unless you really take on a f methodology to the full extent, you, you can just play it, right? And it's very easy to think of water, uh, Agile as yeah. as waterfall with iterations, right? Right. And that's just not the right way to look at it because as long as you start doing that, you will still not reach the effective or the efficiency you can achieve by doing it very differently. So waterfall by... Uh, by iteration would be something like I still have my the documents that I used to prepare I still have people do playing to their original roles that didn't change I just am trying to do less in a less amount of time mm. it helps but there's more to it right yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, yeah and from my experience uh, we only partially I think were successful in that uh, right. Not fully. It depends on the team and how long the team has been operating together, in which manner, and how the team feels comfortable. There's mm. only so much you can change, and th and then the team naturally has to fit itself into the, that paradigm. Uh, you can't force fit it. It'll have to be understood, and people have to take the lessons out and do it. Uh, so I'll I'll say that it depends on the rate of success. As a management team, you can only partially be successful in that. Uh, your people actually will determine the next next part of it, and I've seen variations all over the place. There are some that come to this with a very different mindset and have implemented in in a lot more sort of agile manner, where people really take away the old uh, job descriptions out and start working in a new way. And there are others where we actually had partial success, where we f we could force you don't have to produce these three documents, but mm. then you cannot force the fact that that's still my role and that's what I'll focus on and I'm not going to do the other part of it. Right, and uh, you know, uh, a part of uh, success uh, within any organization, you could actually tie it to uh, the agility of the, of the organizations that are actually giving them those requirements. And uh, the mindset is, you know, if I am coding that and I'm de de developing the software, then I need to be agile, wherein the person who's actually giving me that requirement is not agile, doesn't understand agile. Um, you know, that, there is a, that conflict, and I see that conflict across the board. In fact, um, I had uh, a few friends who actually went to the, the Scrum uh, conference in Vegas last weekend, and they came back and they said the same thing. Uh, you know, that, that conflict does exist, and people were talking in the hallways, and, you know, uh, maybe there were some open panels on the discussion also. So the, 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 the conflict is, uh, you know, I'm productive doing what I'm doing because I'm, you know, I'm ag I have altered my mindset. I'm totally, you know, I have, you know, agility in my mind, and I'm really sticking to the new methodology, wherein my stakeholders are not, and my product owners are not. And uh, you know their uh, management is not, even though my management has you know totally uh, bought into that idea. So you see that as a 
uh, as a continuous hindrance to the agile development methodology as such, or is it something that companies have started addressing at a level where uh, we, s we uh, you know, it, it's, it's, non, it, it's not an issue anymore? Yeah, so <coughs> my perspective is it depends on whose problem it is. The most comfortable position to take is this is what I need, I want it by this time, and, and I'll pay you this much for the, for the work. Right, I, I want you to have your budget under control. Mm. That's the most comfortable position to take. But then you hit the business reality. I have to get something done in four months. And right. the natural progression of this is going to be nine months. Plus, you know what? I don't even know what I want fully at this time. Mm. So I think this reality hitting people asking for it causes some of the change in their mindset as well. But if uh. If there is a team that exactly knows what they want and they have time for that, uh, people want guarantees right. in organizations right. to be successful. Right. A and, and, and that only shifts once you, you ch change the paradigm on somebody wants guarantees, but there is a risk profile to be taken and there is a time pressure and then there is a quality pressure happening at the same time. Right. Wow. Friends, we are just tuning in. Uh, my name is Rani Saripali and I am in conversation with Hatinder Chawla, Senior Manager at Cisco IT and we are talking about agile development and uh, adoption of uh, agile methodologies into, uh, into an organization and making it successful. I mean, uh, running projects through that methodology and delivering on requirements, on time, on budget. We are talking many different things. The number in the studio is 408-912-5265. You have a question. You want to participate in the conversation by all means, uh, 408-912-5265. We're going into a break and we'll be back after these messages. Universal Media Access presents the Tech FM radio program where innovation meets conversation. Listen every weekday from noon to 2 p.m., Monday through Friday on 92.3 FM. If you're interested in participating in active technology discussions, live interviews, updates and more listen to the tech fm radio program from 12 noon to 2 p.m on 92.3 fm for more information on how to get your own segment on the tech fm radio program on 92.3 fm send us an email to info at techfmradio.com that's info at techfmradio.com or call today at 408-440-0851 that's 408-440-0851 Friends, Rainy Sir Polly, welcoming you back to 92.3 FM Studios. This is the Tech FM Radio Show. The number in the studio is 408-912-5265. And we are in conversation with uh, Hatinder Chawla, Senior Manager of IT at Cisco. And, uh, you know, he's been a, a, a visionary within the space of agile development, agile methodology, and using that to really, uh, you, know, you know, foster innovation within the space of software uh, de delivery and development. And uh, we're talking about his experiences and uh, with, uh, with kind of making a paradigm shift, uh, uh, specifically within uh, using Scrum methodologies at Cisco and, um, and, and kind of making that cultural shift also to really get all the organizations uh, or, or, or interconnected organizations to really, uh, you know, adopt to this idea, to this concept, and, and create success along the way. Uh, Hatinder, thank you for taking time and joining us today. And uh, this, this is, this is, uh, this is mind, blo mind, mind blowing. I mean, this conversation. Uh, t tell us. Uh, I just want to, uh, you know, anytime somebody talks about, uh, you know, we want to go, we want to innovate something new, and uh, you know, we want to create. We have an idea. We have a concept. We want to really build that. Uh, and build that in a unique way. Uh, where, from a software perspective, you know, where do you see the challenges? The rosy part is it, get, it gets done, and it's all good, it's all great. But uh, we know for sure that, uh, you know, of the, the biggest stumbling block in the whole process is how do I take my innovative ideas and connect to the technologies I have and make my idea not die at the same time deliver create something how you know, wh how do you see that and and there is a challenge for sure within within that but how do you how do you see that gap bridging or that problem being overcome uh, based on your experience and your uh, your insights yeah and i think it's an important problem to look at and I, I think the whole methodology we use to develop changes how we look at that problem generally 
uh, if you look at our user, users today, they go to all websites, they go to the Amazon.coms, they go to Ebays, they mm. go to Facebook, they're on, into social networking, they're searching on a Google page. They gather experiences outside the world that they expect to get in a corporate world as well. So mm. software, there is a difference between the consumer software and the business software. Right. And consumer and innovation is generally user experience innovation is led in the consumer marketplace. Right. And, and the business marketplace is generally trailing and, and, and catching up. And to some extent, it's supposed to be that way because you, don't, you, you only want to take so much risk with the new s paradigm mm. uh, bef b uh, until you see a, a broader level of acceptance or success for that paradigm. Right. right. Uh, now, uh, unless it happens to be the core part of your business, when it's an operational thing, you don't want to take that risk. Mm. Right. So the, the key thing is now who uh, introduces those 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 newer paradigms. This is pure innovation mm. we're talking about, mm. and and now you have to look at the perspective of what does success mean to each person in this value chain, right? right. Uh, if you are in a company and in you're in an IT part of a company, uh, you look at developing the best IT software, right? But then if you are in the operations part of a company, you look at how do I reduce my operational costs. How do I make whatever I'm doing more efficient? Right. It's all about the the bottom line of the business, right? right? Managing to that, and if you you have a revenue generating source from your software, it's it's about the top line, right? As well, right, right, right. So, the innovation in technology uh, comes a lot from the people who know mm. and who care about the technology elements, mm. right? What waterfall does generally is it throws a problem coming from the top, which would be if the operational people in the organization have their goals, they come down to the technology developers. Right. Now you need to just reverse it and say, well, but the technology developers have a huge role to play in actually bringing the software-led innovation to, to these solutions. Mm. And if everything is very well you know, uh, constrained in requirements, you will never be able to do that. So there is a give and take here. Mm. And what Agile does in this whole flow is it gives people who, who generally would not be thinking of innovation to come and start thinking about smaller elements of how they can introduce those new innovation, innovative ideas into the product, so, right? Uh, well. I, I've been working on this for quite a few years and recently as well, right? If you look at the whole uh, change in the mobile space, everybody wants to be on a mobile, you expect your applications to work on the mobile platform. But then you question how many business applications actually work successfully in that platform, right? And and right. and it's all about how we look at building to these. How much say do technologists have in that versus how much say do operational folks who have you know certain goals into that process? So, what agility does is it brings people together to bring their best mindsets and solve a problem using both these angles. What Waterfall does is separate people out so that they cannot and do not have a good forum to be discussing these. When you talk about creating software and you're, uh, you're engaging in, in, you know, you have a certain path th through which you, uh, a, a certain way of looking at it and you say, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And by the time you realize that you're not producing the outputs, it's like maybe 80% of your time and 80% of your money is gone. And then the rest 20%, you come back and say, where do I need to make the move so that do I undo the whole thing that I have done so far and, and start from scratch, start from zero? Um, or should I just uh, shift from this point and do the new thing so that it may, it will probably get me there? But the new thing has not yet proven within the organization to get to that level. And uh, my experience has been that at some point when you are making those decisions, your innovation is lost, right? I mean, you had an innovative idea and a total engagement there, and now as a part of this whole clutter, you are not inspired anymore, and now your behavior has moved from being inspired to just get the job done, and at the end, uh, you know, you're not fulfilled. You know, that, I've seen that pattern happen multiple times. And uh, it's, it's obviously, you know, it comes down to leadership, it comes down to you 
you know, measuring the pulse as you're going through that and you know, keeping people accountable, keeping the vision intact and all those things do happen within that time frame. But uh, is there a way to address this or this is the standard grind anybody has to go through? So I think everybody has their own solution to this problem. It is a big problem when the success target is very well defined, there is going to be less innovation in, that, in developing to that. And a lot of startups actually fail, right? Mm. And, and that means that the success rate is low when it comes to innovation. Right. Now you apply that to either the smaller industry and startups fail, but venture capitalists have a certain ratio of if th the ones that succeed, they will get me good enough money. Now mm. how do you translate that to a, to a large company that's running and wants more success out of its outcomes, mm. right? Because mm. you can't fail a big company, right? right? So one of the things you do within is instead of uh, have a few things that you run under the under the hood to uh, you know mm. per se mm -hmm. uh, it's called stealth innovation yeah. it's called hiding from some people so that everybody doesn't come to you every week and ask <laughs> hey did you do it right uh, and and those are paradigms that you just have to use uh, so i i am a believer in that mm. i encourage that uh, I think it goes away from the whole waterfall agile discussion, but it goes into uh, it's how do you want to do something until the sort of like the baby is is grown enough, you know, right. to, to where it can handle some of the realities of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, very, very well said. Very well said. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, the 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 other the other challenge that I also see in in industry, based on my experience and knowledge, is. Um, you know, there is one thing about uh, about opening yourself up to a new way of looking at the problem that you have got going and accommodating new technologies to address them versus saying no to the new technologies without understanding, you know, what would otherwise, you know, a positive outcomes would they create. Um, and the resistance part itself, which is your, uh, you know, your own personal, uh, you know, opinion about something that is not well quantified, not well e evaluated, and I see that, you know, we call that resistance, we call that, you know, resistance for change, and all those things. But, um, you know, you address that with education, you address that with uh, continuous engagement, and all. But at the end, uh, you know, there comes a point where. Um, you know, it's not worth doing it anymore. I mean, nobody understands us, nobody cares for us, nobody takes us seriously. And, you know, then we see a pattern of disengagement there. You know, I've seen it happening at the team levels. We have seen that happening at the, uh, you know, just the group level. We've seen that in the organization level. I mean, different people have different levels of engagement and they decided at that point not to. And uh, now suddenly you are um, neither have the innovation anymore, neither you have deliverability anymore. And now you're dragged into a people situation, which is, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing here. And and I, I mean I'm I'm pretty sure you have faced that you've seen that what sort what are your views on that that side of it? Yeah, and I and I think everybody goes through that. Sometimes it's a phase you go through. Sometimes it's the way the company structures and works. Right. Uh, but net net, uh, I strongly believe in the individual and the the company and the fact that they're different. You have choices to make. You choose to work where you either will be innovating, you will be doing that work, and the and the organization will foster that, or you will find yourself in a position where you want to do that, but the organization does not fully support that. And, and that support doesn't have to be very explicit. Those are micro messages that go every day. You created something new. Did someone feel excited about it? Did your peers feel excited about it, right? So organization, to me, I define it as it's a peer network, and it's the formal way that we know of as mm. the top-down management style of organizations. but. I, I think it's very important that if you really want to innovate that you find that support system mm. and that it's not guaranteed that you will find that support system everywhere. Mm. The support system gets exactly to, does anybody care? Do people like, get excited? Do, when I talk to people, do I get, you know, can I bounce back ideas right. uh, that go to this level? And is anybody willing to entertain an idea that maybe two years from now it has a, it has a potential, but not today? Right. How many people are willing to bet on that? Right. So I, I think as an individual, you are a motivation speaker yourself, right? And uh, you, you, 
you can get demotivated in such well, absolutely, situations. Absolutely. Uh, but my take is you define your own destiny at that point. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, very well said, Hatinder. Uh, friends, if you're just tuning in, my name is Srini Saripali, and I'm in conversation with Hatinder Chawla, Senior Manager at Cisco IT. Uh, we are on 92.3 FM, and this is the Tech FM radio show. We talk about IT, we talk about many different things within the technology space. The number in the studio is 408-912-5265, just in case you want to join the conversation. Uh, you can do that, 408-912-5265. We'll come back, and when we come back from the break, we're going to take a break now, but come back. But when we do, then we'll we will talk about mobility, software-defined networks, cloud comp computing. All these things are the big things happening right now and how uh, do they fit into IT and how IT organizations are making the shift and how are they planning to adopt to these new uh, new technologies. So we'll come back, we'll talk about that. After <laughs> Friends, Srini Sripali, welcome you back to 92.3 FM Studios. We are uh, on the Tech FM radio show and we are talking to Hatinder Chawla, Senior uh, Manager at uh, Cisco IT. And we're talking about uh, you know software development, uh, delivery, and also innovation and many different things. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that I mentioned before we, we went into the break was uh, you know, the whole uh, new evolution that's happening around mobility, around, uh, um, around software-defined networks, and, uh, you know, uh, w cloud computing and all, and uh, bigger organizations are, uh, even though are successfully well-funded and they have the profits and the possibilities to go after these technologies, uh, you know, it's hard to make a change, it's hard to really adopt to something new, and uh, the quicker you do it, the better you're off. Uh, the the, if you delay it, then there are chances of you lagging behind, and uh, and that will directly impact your competitiveness in the marketplace. Um, so Hatinder, uh, thanks again uh, for uh, staying in around and, and talking to us about uh, all this. This is very enlightening to me personally, and I'm, I'm sure that all our listeners are also getting enlightened. And the uh, uh, question is, you shared, uh, you shared this very early on in the conversation that uh, you know many of the consumer applications, people use them, they feel uh, they, get, they get the uh, the high from those applications, they expect the same high within the enterprise and they don't get it. Uh, and There are uh, issues and challenges and all those things. Um, now that we are talking about cloud computing and now you're talking about infrastructural change, infrastructure changes happening at a whole different level, how do you see this evolving with, you know, obviously, f you know, across, you know, Cisco for that matter or, or f for that matter, any other company? How do you see this uh, you know, this is this is a big one. It's a huge one. Yeah, it's a big marketplace for Cisco. A lot, a lot of companies in that area. I could speak to some of uh, as a user of cloud computing. Sure. Right. I don't create uh, data centers, but I use uh, a lot of the technology that goes sure. into these data sure. centers. <coughs> so, just from an experience standpoint, when I was uh, in need for resources, because cloud computing is all about. Uh, or it's a couple of things. One is you, you need CPU, you need compute capacity, you need storage, you need networking, right, to get sure. applications done. Uh, and and then you have them in one place, and, and, and cloud, what it does is it, there's a whole, you know, a lot more to that, but it really makes those available in multiple places to you by by adding the security elements to these. I, I could tell you five, six years ago, if I wanted a server, hmm. Uh, for extra computation capacity, it would take me six months to get one, right? Right, And that's after getting through an expedited process and paying a lot of money to get it, right? Now, that whole paradigm has changed. If I really want one, it's about maybe a week. We right. in Cisco have a process where you can get one in 15 minutes. Wow. Right? So the capacity with the whole cloud paradigm is available now. Mm. And what virtualization has done is it's not about getting the box in the data center anymore. Mm. It's about using your software to getting an allocation within the boxes that are available to you. Right. And, and that's how this is coming down so drastically. Right. Uh, and, and I think it's there to stay. It makes things very really efficient. And for me as a user of these technologies, right. uh, it, it, it gets my, makes my job easier. Right. Right. And it's... And course it's not that costly the other aspect is that we use now providers that are not in our data center the cloud computing has come together with the uh, other space on uh, platform as a service and then right, right, software right. as a service right. and applications as a service so 
depends on which paradigm you want to get into. Right. Uh, if you don't have your data centers, you can use the infrastructure as a service and build upon that. If right, you, right. If you uh, have your own platforms and infrastructures, right, maybe you go to a provider that has software. Right. So uh, the whole process of using business software is also changing, whereas in the mm. past it was all about my data center. Now we actually effectively mix technologies and software. We connect uh, with the salesforce.com that right. is totally in, in, in an outside totally cloud. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, it has to be secured mm. through our processes and, mm. and systems that we have, but we blend it in into our technologies that we run in our own data centers. So a huge shift, huge acceleration for us in, in how I see the ability to get things done. So is it is it putting a lot of pressure on the core development now? Now that uh, the hardware provisioning is so easily you know done, and uh, you know how how is that actually playing into the overall timelines of delivery of the applications uh, from a development standpoint? I think it eases pressures eventually because nobody comes and says I want developers to work harder. People mm. want solutions and people want solutions in faster. Right. Now in in the earlier days we used to put all this uh, you know you know the like dates and the durations there which it doesn't you know yeah I don't know when I'm going to get my servers so I'm going to block 4 weeks or 6 weeks or 10 weeks and then uh, thereafter you're just playing with your time and uh, you know it shows up it shows up it doesn't show up doesn't show up uh, even if it shows up early you're still actually using that as an excuse to really delay the development and de delay the delivery so uh, those things are now well measured. Uh, pretty much, as oh like yeah. you're saying, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very predictable, yeah. and it's very shorter, right? And I don't think it adds pressure to to developers. I think it eases pressure, right? Because if you have what you need, right, you can get done what you want to get done. Mm. Uh, it's always the scarcity that adds to the pressure, timeline right. pressures, right. and dealing with things that you don't have to. Right, right. Yeah. And and coming back to the the uh, mobility part of this, uh, you know, and and mobile applications. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, s you know, you are a leader within the sales uh, IT for, uh, so for a very long time, and uh, there there um, certainly are very savvy people, uh, account managers on the field, and uh, sales professionals, very savvy, and they just uh, they expect, as you said a certain kind of engagement with the application. You go to Salesforce, you have a certain degree of engagement, you come back to your own native application, and you have a whole different thing. Um, you know, And then they have the whole spreadsheet stuff, their mindset around how to use spreadsheets and all. Uh, how, how, in your experience, how the bigger corporations are dealing with this mobile requirements? You know, It's not simply about an app that you can download, you can download, put it in an app store, and get it down, right? That's, that's that part, I think, Pretty much everybody has graduated from that mindset now. It's about that engagement, the whole engagement, the whole experience as you are. Uh, you know, you want to get the same level of, uh, you know, of that experience using your own application uh, and, and, and expecting the same features, same functions, and same level of engagement uh, that otherwise you would expect from any other, uh, you know, mobile app. So how do you how do you see is the, is there still a struggle continuing in that space? Is it something that is uh, manageable now, there are enough technologies to address that, or is it still a cultural issue? So, <coughs> the consumer market space in the last uh, maybe four or five years has drastically changed that whole perception of mobility. Five years ago, if you could build one feature in your application that is mobile, you, was the best. you just did a great job. Right, right. And yeah. you, you, you could get a lot of customer satisfaction uh, just doing that. Today, the expectation has changed from people. Mm. People expect mobility not as a way to use you know, a mobile phone, but as a way to get their work done. Mm. I don't have to be uh, at work to get my work done. Yeah. And then VPN was introduced, so you could be home and connect to your work. And then you still had your desktop or laptop at home, and you connect your work and get your work done. That was mobility. Right. A and then the next level of mobility that we see now is you know what, I don't have to be home. I don't even have to be at my parents' place, for example. Right. I could be in a car. I could be in a restaurant doing some, you know, eating food, and I still want to be connected to the same level through some device. Wow. And I think that's the key mobility message. And what, what people find is that a lot of the consumer side applications now are being built for that because they cater to consumers' needs when they want to use it. Uh, the enterprise market, however, in application development is still very fragmented. It is going to get there. Hmm. Uh, technology is not enough, though. Hmm. You need the software on top of that. 
And that's the key part right now. How is the software going to be available mm. uh, across the board? Because these are huge investments by some companies who have been there for a long time. That and, and right, right, and they want right. to keep those investments in place, right? right, right, right so right. Uh, it's going to shift. Mm. Enterprise follows the consumer when it goes to technology and innovation. Five years from now, you'll probably be in a very li different landscape. Right. But there's no doubt in my mind that the time is today where people have these expectations and these are unmet expectations in the enterprise application software space. Right. A and, and, and we just have to change from the paradigm of, hey, let's go build something, some features for mobile devices right. to let's build all features right. for mobile devices. Right, right, right. Friends, if you're just uh, listening to us, uh, this is Srini Saripalli, and I'm in conversation with Hatinder Chawla, senior manager at uh, IT Cisco, and we're talking about many different things here, and uh, this this uh, this whole conversation has been uh, very, very, uh, uh, you know, I would say, let me look for a word for this one, invigorating uh, would be a proper yeah. word, you know, first, just <laughs> it's very educational, very insightful, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, one thing, Hatinder, I personally wanted to ask you, which is, um, where do you see you know, given, you know, from an IT perspective, let's talk about that, we'll come back to other technologies and all that, but from a, from a, from a IT perspective, you know, before we used to say IT is five years behind the, the latest technologies, uh, you know, there are because the leadership's lack of faith in their, uh, you know, taking risk and uh, whatever, it, whatever the reasons are, and there's new, there could be numerous, but uh, has, that has that gap of five, 10, or whatever those years used to be back in mid 90s, is to, to a point right now, has it gone down, reduced, or has been perceived to be reduced, or really being reduced, and wha where do you see it? That's an interesting question. I don't think I can fully you know, answer that one. But my perception is that the gap is reducing, and the reason it is reducing is, n is because now the cloud uh, environment we are in, mm. you don't have to build everything. Mm. And and there is increased competition in the enterprise space to actually provide solutions that mm. now match what people's expectations are. So you could go to a box.net, for example, right? And instead of using your old uh, system to manage your files and documents, you can go there and it provides you almost at the same power of capabilities that you have now right. that, that you expect in a consumer marketplace. Right. So there's just more choice available. Right. Now the key question is, in those cases, are you going to make that choice? Or right. are you going to stay with your capital investments and right. your right. And, and there it, it's it's a it's it's a little complicated because it's it's capital investments. People have made decisions. Some people are still not fully bought into these ideas, right? right. And then there could be other issues about uh, security of uh, right. you know right. uh, documents or right. other uh, business relevant data. Right. But but it's the gap is going to reduce as right. you see it going forward. It has certainly reduced from the past. Uh, it's not totally there, but I, I totally see that the, 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 the new technology environment is helping with that. Thank you. I mean, uh, this is, um, I wish I would continue this discussion, Hatinder, and I'll, what we'll do is we'll bring you back again, uh, and, and we'll, uh, you know, there are so many things that I would personally want to discuss with you within this space, because we are talking about performance, we are talking about innovation, we are talking about uh, you know, delivery. We're also talking about the financial aspects of all this and the accountability aspects of all this. We're also talking about, you know, uh, a change, a shift. Uh, you call it um, adopting the new culture, or you talk, you talk. So you can say it, it's uh, it's about you know discarding the way you have been doing things for a very very long time. I mean, there are so many ways. You know, there's so many different ways, dimensions through which you can look at this. And I really want to thank you, Hatinder, you taking time and joining us today. I wish we had more time to continue this. But is it okay if we can get you back again uh, sometime? Uh, you yeah, know, it was, it was a speech. pleasure being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. you know, and definitely any time in the future. Absolutely. Right. Thank you, Hatinder. Thank you. Okay. Uh, friends, that was Hatinder Chawla from uh, Cisco IT Senior Manager. Uh, we, were talk we were talking about agility, agile development, innovation, and many different things. Uh, we're going to go into the top of the hour break, and when we come back, we are going to be talking about Tycon 2013 happening tomorrow and day after. And joining me will be Saurabh Tandon, who is the co-chair of Youth Forum at Tycon, and we'll be talking to him about all the great things he has planned out for this. So stay tuned, and I'll be back after these messages. 
feel so close to you right now it's a force field I wear my heart upon